this base from uh, Mexico, or is it South Africa, <laughs> wherever, this is a very disturbing issue, on a serious note. It is a very, very disturbing issue. Because there are so many questions which cannot be answered. And uh, in this recording, I'll just try to take us a bit deeper into this uh, issue. Now, before I proceed, it's very important that I issue a disclaimer, or rather I issue the ground rules. Yeah? This is not a, a session for the kind of things I see in Facebook that, uh, oh, this has happened, uh, Jubilee government this, Jubilee government that. Yes, the government is to blame, yeah? But uh, let us deal with the evidence on the ground. Whatever accusations I'll make, I'll make with uh, clear backing. And uh, what is just a theory, I will say is a theory, yeah? That is our uh, way of operation here. Because you'll realize this is not a Facebook page, yeah, where you just write anything or you say anything, yeah. There are a lot of people who rely on these reports. There are a lot of people who uh, are very interested in my opinion and they assume that my opinion is informed. I take that responsibility very seriously and therefore uh, expect something very balanced. If I do not say things which you wanted me to say, then just know that I'm being balanced, I'm doing my work. I'm not here to please anybody, I'm just here to give you the bare facts as they are without favoring any side. Let me start by saying something very good has come out of uh, the government put, being put in a very uncomfortable situation because as I speak now, we're expecting unga for 90 shillings. Now I'm not sure if most of us appreciate uh, how big an impact this is eh? because uh, most of us uh, at this level where you can listen to a YouTube uh, video uh, where you can uh, read newspapers, be on the internet, you may not realize what the vast majority of our fellow Kenyans go through. So let me bear with me for two seconds as I just make it clear to you. Yeah, the vast majority of people live from hand to mouth. Yeah, that means you go for Kibarua, uh, somewhere like industry area, or wherever you're earning 400, uh, 300 shillings, and that money has to be budgeted daily for uh, the the needs of your family to feed the hungry mouths in your house yeah when unga is 160 140 it means that uh, chances are that that family will have a meal without any skuma without any boga just uh, ugali the way it is uh, probably with the water and salt yeah this is not fiction this is the reality of the ground now at 90 shillings you're giving leeway for 20 30 shillings which will buy mboga yeah skuma wiki or whatever will go with the ugali so it makes a huge difference it is such a huge difference uh, that uh, most of us will not be able to appreciate it anyway on to the main issue here this appears to be a clear case of corruption being caught with its pants down yeah because uh, if we can go back to the way the whole issue started the whole issue started with the uh, uh, KRA issuing a gazette notice allowing people to import maize. Okay, so this is what attracted the attention of everybody because everybody knows we cannot import maize because uh, that would affect our local farmers. It's, it's a good rule which is there, yeah. But because of the shortage, uh, it's important that uh, you know it was an emergency shortage, the maize had to be imported very quickly to be able to, so that Kenyans don't, don't go hungry, because our staple food is unga, ugali. Indeed, God has been very merciful to Kenyans, because uh, Uganda, you realize our neighbors, Uganda, went through several years of civil war, and they're able to survive because uh, their meals are diversified. They rely on bananas, bananas grow on the farms, they rely on potatoes, they rely on a lot of other things. Kenyans are just unga people. So you can imagine if there was a civil war in Kenya, what would happen? We don't have any bananas, we don't have any uh, potatoes, oh God forbid, it would be terrible. This KRA notice is what uh, triggered a chain of events which have put the government on the spot. Yeah, the Jubilee government has really been put on the spot here. I will not bore you the details which you already know of saying first uh, the, the, the maize is from Mexico and then uh, saying, oh, no, it is actually from South Africa. Because we already know, uh, you know, the problem is whoever did this did not realize that Kenya has changed a lot. We are very widely traveled people. We have people who are very aware of uh, a lot of things. And uh, it was quickly realized that uh, how could this ship have reached so quickly, yeah? Uh, let me just uh, make a point here which is important. 
uh, it is true that we normally have uh, 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 storages in the high seas uh, that traders especially who deal with commodities grain and so on when in the high seas uh, for quick response uh, to certain areas now i would expect if i was doing such a business there would be a lot of those ships hovering around uh, africa or around our coast because of the the announcement of the drought you know we have been talking about the drought for the last uh, two months or so so naturally they'd be hovering around uh, this area to either get orders direct from uh, relief uh, agencies or even governments yeah so that is true however there's a lot of very very fishy things perhaps the most fishy thing according to me is the name of the company which dealt with this particular uh, um, shipment which had which docked in Mombasa recently as mentioned quite rightly in a nation article a daily nation article the name of the company was Holband uh, uh, UK limited which has been associated with a lot of these deals yeah the second thing which really 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 makes me very suspicious and uh, points fingers that uh, there's something fishy going on here is the timing we are headed into the elections and uh, normally the elections there's a lot of money which is needed for campaigns and uh, historically let's just look at historically historically what has been happening is that we have had a lot of uh, very similar deals to this uh, in the run up to the election around election season uh, those in the sugar growing regions will already know that uh, what used to happen uh, in the Moy days is that uh, artificial shortages of sugar were created. Now the way this thing works, when there's an artificial shortage of sugar, apparently we produce sugar locally at a much higher price than the international price. Therefore somebody imports sugar and sells uh, locally at the normal price which is available locally and they actually end up making a bigger margin than the manufacturers locally. Yeah, I, I think you get me there. So there's a lot of money made there. In fact, at one point we covered in the Kumekucha blog a case where we got information that uh, some of this sugar was not even coming through the port. It was uh, being offloaded from the off, off the port. What was being used were speedboats. People were hired on the beach, so the speedboats would, would go to and fro, getting the bags of uh, uh, sugar. They land on the beach, people carry them to a lorry, then they're ferried off. True story. True story. That was you know, the kind of corruption that uh, goes on in our country. But even more telling is uh, the fact that well, the last time we had a very similar maize scandal, although the maize was not being imported, it was uh, coming from the cereals board, we had a minister of agriculture known as William Samoy Ruto, whom, as you all know, is the current deputy president. So again, we have the same uh, uh, person in a very responsible position, and we have a similar, very, very similar uh, uh, crisis, and again it is involved with maize. Okay? Now the last and most telling and very sad point, which uh, just makes me so sad, is the following. Actually, I'll start with a question. The most important question that Kenyans need to ask, and we all need to ask ourselves, is was this shortage artificially created or not? So that we're all together. Why would the shortage be artificially created? A shortage would be artificially created so that somebody imports the maize and again sells and makes a killing. Because again, maize is available in the world market at a cheaper rate than what we produce it here for. Yeah, it is available. There are sources where you can get the maize for much cheaper than what it is produced in the country. So the whole idea is you import the maize at that very cheap price you sell at a very huge markup in order to reach uh, what the price is locally, especially when there's a shortage, and you make a killing. So was this shortage artificial, uh, artificially created? Was it created deliberately by powerful people within the government? Or was it just a case of uh, somebody forgot to do their job, somebody didn't do their job, they didn't foresee the shortage that would definitely inevitably come in. Even when anybody would see there would have been a shortage. Because we've been talking about a drought. Yeah? We've been talking about low maize reserves. Since last year, yeah? we're already heading towards the middle of this year. Yeah? And uh, we've reached a situation where the maize had to be imported at the very last minute when already there was a problem in the market. Yeah? Clearly it should be obvious to anybody that this shortage was artificially created by somebody in order for them to profit. It's as simple as that, and nobody can deny that. Why am I so sure? Well, let's take an example. When you're at your home, you normally plan ahead. 
yeah you know that school fees has to be paid a certain month this has to be paid and you normally plan ahead now the homes which are not able to plan ahead maybe the head of the house the husband is a poor planner there's still contingency measures measures which can be put in in order to avert a disaster before it actually happens and this is what actually happens let me give you a very uh, quick example you know that generally the school fees so you're supposed to make arrangements very early yeah for that generous school fees save put money aside and etc and so on yeah but then most parents find that uh, december arrives and the way they're looking at their budget they're not going to be able to make it in january so what do they do they go to the circle the cooperative society or wherever they normally borrow money from and they borrow money in good time so that in january things go according to plan now that is the way it's the same way with the government a government plans ahead but there's one key difference between an individual and a government a government has various agencies which give early warning uh, uh, signals, which are able to focus these things. And not only within the government, they also have organizations in the private sector, which normally send in reports, send in details and so on. The long and short of it is that the government knows well in advance that there's going to be a shortfall, especially for something as basic and as staple as maize is in Kenya. Yeah, Which would mean that the government of Kenya knew that there would be this problem, yeah, not end of last year when most people were able to, were standing up to check what's happening. They must have known that this problem was, was going to occur yeah, in uh, early last year. Okay? And as the drought started, as signs of the drought came in, yeah, you already know there's going to be a crisis. Yeah? You, already, you already know that there's a shortfall. And uh, you're hoping maybe, let's give the benefit of doubt, you're hoping that maybe the rains will not fail and that you'll be able to harvest and meet the shortfall. Yeah? Now, that would mean that as soon as the drought starts biting in, there should be panic and people running around and trying to do something well in advance before the situation becomes a problem and a crisis in the public. You get what I'm trying to say? That, my dear fellow Kenyans, did not happen in this case. Verdict, this shortage must have been artificially created for the benefit of profit. That should be very clear. And it does not uh, matter what side of the political divide you belong, because both sides were suffering. Yeah, uh, Jubilee eat Ugali as much as uh, NASA eats Ugali. All of us eat Ugali. And uh, when there's no unga, there's no supermarket where you'll go and you'll be asked, uh, what part of the polit political divide do you belong? Okay, Jubilee people, you can get your Ugali. NASA people know Ugali today. No, 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 no. Every Kenyan is the same. Every Kenyan is on par as far as this is concerned. Of course, I'm not including the Bonacubas, our politicians, the rich people. Those guys don't have a problem with food, yeah? Uh, they don't have a problem with Unga, definitely. I'm talking about the ordinary Kenyan, okay? That, to me, is the saddest, saddest, saddest thing in this case. And, you know, to make matters even worse, to rub uh, salt on uh, wounds, yeah? We, of course, the millers... Uh, in Kenya, we have a disease with a lot of business people. Well, it's maybe some people can call it natural business instinct. When What normally happens, when you foresee a shortage, especially in something like hunger, what would you do? Whatever stock you have, you hold it back. When people, when you stop distributing, when people come for it, you say, no, akuna. What would be the whole uh, objective of this? The whole objective of this is that the longer you hold, and the longer there's a shortage, the price continues to climb up. So, for example, if you had a stock worth 1 million, uh, let's say 1,000 bags, where you're supposed to make 100 bob per bag, yeah, your profit margin, and you hold and the price climbs the way it has been climbing two, three times, you end up making an extra 200, 300,000. That's serious uh, money. And, of course, we're not talking about thousands of bags or 100,000 of bags. We're talking about a million bags or so and more. So it is a very significant uh, figure that these people made. You will notice that a lot of people have noticed this. Uh, what normally happens is that now when the maize arrived and when the government said that they'll release subsidized maize, which is again another problem I'll deal with in the second part of this recording. Anyway, for now, once they said the other maize was released, suddenly the maize flooded in the market. Now and you'll notice the people are hoarding, now there's no more reason to hoard because they already know the shortage is uh, at an end and prices will not climb any higher. Therefore, all those people are holding release, suddenly release their stock into the market. So suddenly there's a lot of wound in the market. But through all this, who suffers? Not the millers, not the suppliers. The people who suffer is the poor, ordinary monanchi. And to me, 
this is the saddest, saddest thing ever. Yeah? Because the ordinary person has got no options. The ordinary person has got limited options. And indeed, uh, people have been talking a lot ab about a lot of other things. And uh, people even make jokes about Unga uh, on social media and elsewhere. But I can assure you, to the vast majority of ordinary Kenyans, the lack of Unga is not a joke. Okay? Now just catch uh, the second part of this uh, series. There's some very important things that uh, I want to point out here, um, which, so that we get to the bottom of this. Thank you. This is Chris Kumekwicha.